have an Iron Man sequel script for me? Yes, sir, I do. So you know how everyone loved the first Iron Man movie? I mean, yeah, that's that's why we're talking right now. Uh, that's a very good point. Anyway, I asked myself, how can we make people like this movie like five times more than that one? Oh yeah, what'd you come up with? Well, I figure we could take what should probably be like five separate Iron Man movies and cram them all into one. Are you worried it's gonna <laughs> feel disjointed and all over the place? Well, to be honest, at first I was worried, but then I was like, I'm hungry, and I went to get a burrito and completely forgot about it. Whoops. Whoopsie. So what are all these storylines we're gonna be <laughs> following? Well, there's one about the government wanting to get their hands on Tony's technology. There's another about Tony's competitor, Justin Hammer, trying to replicate his tech. There's a whole thing where Tony has daddy issues. There's a thing about him handing the company over to Pepper Potts, and also he's in love with her. Then there's a bad <laughs> Russian guy that's trying to kill him, and then there's a whole thing about Tony slowly being killed by his own suit. Uh, that should definitely be more than one movie. Oh yeah, it's gonna be a real cram fest. And you said Tony's being killed by his suit? Yeah, he's being poisoned by the arc reactor thing in his chest. The arc reactor that's powering the magnet, keeping shrapnel out of his heart? Yeah, so he's gotta figure something out or he's gonna die. I mean, why doesn't he just swap that out for another non-toxic power source? He literally had that thing running on a car battery in the first movie. Well, the arc reactor also powers the suit, so I guess he wouldn't be Iron Man without it. Oh, so the arc reactor has to be inside his chest cavity for the suit to work? Well, no, because Rhodey is able to put on a suit later and he doesn't have an arc reactor in his chest cavity. So it seems like Tony has a pretty easy solution here. Yeah, well, eventually he is gonna solve it. Oh, how does he do that? By synthesizing a new element. What? Yeah, it turns out his dad had discovered what? a new element and so he hid the plans for it in a diorama so that his son could decipher it in the future. Seems overly complicated. Oh yeah, it's super complicated and way over the top, but he ends up figuring it out. Yeah, but when he discovers the plans, Jarvis is like, bad news, Tony, this element is impossible to synthesize. Oh, so what does Tony do? He immediately does it. But how? By being <laughs> smart and doing it. Why even mention that it's impossible to do if we're just gonna have him do it immediately? Because it's dramatic. If you say so. I do. So anyway, there's also this bad guy named Whiplash. Oh, what's his deal? Well, Tony's dad completely ruined his dad's life, so he wants to kill Tony. Okay. So he builds an arc reactor of his own and makes these crazy whip things. Is he not able to make anything better than whips? Oh no, he definitely <laughs> is, but his villain name is Whiplash. Oh, so he has to make whips at least once in the movie. Exactly. Very smart. Anyway, so he goes to this race in Monaco and just starts chopping up cars with his whips. What's his plan here? To kill Tony. How's he supposed to do that by chopping up race cars? Well, at the last minute before the race, Tony actually got into one of the cars. Oh, how did Whiplash know he was gonna do that? He didn't. It was completely spur of the moment. So what was his plan to kill Tony if he hadn't gotten into a car randomly? I don't know. Fair enough. Anyway, so then Happy Hogan is gonna have to rush to bring Tony his suit. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah, so he's gonna have to drive against traffic on the racetrack, but before he leaves, he's like, come on, Pepper, come sit in the back seat. Why would he bring her on that insanely dangerous <laughs> mission? So she can be there. But anyway, so then they're gonna ram into Whiplash with their car. But I'm guessing his armor blocks the damage. Oh, he doesn't have armor. What? Yeah, no, he's like practically bare-chested. Well, then why didn't any security guards shoot him or something? I don't know, I guess they were busy with other stuff. Huh, busy day at the racetrack. Anyway, so then Happy's gonna ram his car into Whiplash like four times. So Whiplash dies? No, because when cars ram into people, People, it doesn't do any damage to the human body. Oh, uh, <laughs> learning new stuff about cars is tight. I'm gonna go play in traffic right after this meeting. Well, I can't recommend that enough. That's gonna be awesome. <laughs> oh yeah, it is. So anyway, Justin Hammer oh, is gonna yeah. hire Whiplash to make some tech, but mm. he's gonna end up making a bunch of drones in an Iron Man suit of his own. Oh, so there's gonna be a final battle where Tony fights someone who also has a suit? That's right. Didn't we do that in the last movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, people <laughs> did like that movie, so I guess it makes sense to do it again. My thoughts exactly. So how does Tony Tony bring him down. Well, Whiplash opens his helmet mid-fight for no reason, so Tony and Rhodey are able to <laughs> blast no him and do some serious damage. Wow, super nice of him to expose a huge <sighs> weak spot in the middle of a fight to the death. Yeah, it's definitely helpful of him to do that. Now, I don't quite <laughs> understand what Whiplash's personality is supposed to be. Well, he's Russian, and also he has a bird. That's it? Pretty much. I love it. <laughs> Great. Also, I hate to do this, but we kind of have to hype up the Avengers in this movie. Is there something you can shoehorn in there? Are you asking mm. me to shove another story thread into this? movie? Yeah, I guess I am. Well, hell yeah, I can. Super easy. Barely an inconvenience. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, I'll toss Black Widow in there. What's she gonna do? She's gonna be there. That is great. <laughs> I can also have Nick Fury show up. Maybe they're assessing if Tony's good for the Avengers. Well, let's not get too ahead of ourselves here. Oh, well, at the end, I'll have him be like, you know what? We don't want you on the team, but you could be a consultant. Oh, wow. So there's not gonna be any payoff to the story thread in this movie. I love it. Oh, yeah. It's gonna be a huge tease that's only gonna pay off in a couple of years. I love the sound of that. We should do something <laughs> like that in every movie. 
It sounds good to me. Great. So you're cool with the script? Yeah, it sounds great. I'm sure everyone's gonna be really pumped to come back for the sequel. Oh yeah, why wouldn't they be? <laughs> there we go. Fireman 2. You know, this is one that's it's I put it in the same realm as Thor and Thor the, the Dark World. Like I put all those movies in the same kind of bucket because I didn't really care for them. When it's on, at least Iron Man 2, when Iron Man 2 is on, if it's on a TV and I'm in the room, I'll watch it. But I don't choose to watch it. <laughs> if that's the best way to say it. It's one of those movies where it's just too much going on. Kind of like kind of like Avengers Age of Ultron. Like it's just way too much stuff going on. You're trying to set up too many things. I remember when leading up to this movie, a big piece of it was going to be on his drinking problem, his alcoholism. And they were going to really try to delve deep into that. And then it didn't really, like it kind of had a couple of moments where, you know, he's getting drunk and doing crazy stuff in the suit. But I don't feel like it really dealt with that piece of it. Not like how Iron Man 3 dealt with his PTSD of what happened in New York, the Battle of New York. So I, I feel like there was just way too many things. It, it should have just focused on, you know, maybe his issue with the suit. And I, I would still include Justin Hammer in there too. I really like Sam Rockwell in that role. I wish that we could see more of him. And he was more involved in everything that's kind of going on here. Um, I always forget that Kate Mara was in this one. Look at the cast. And I'm like, oh, look, I forgot Kate Mara showed up in here at one point. She provided the subpoena for him to show up in court with the government. That's right. So that was like a quick little. Huh. But yeah, overall, like for me, this one's very forgettable. It does have the cool Thor end credit scene with the hammer and, you know, uh, Phil Coulson finding the hammer, all that kind of stuff. But it didn't really do much for me. I know there's that whole thing about the little kid with the Iron Man toy helmet being Peter Parker. Like they tried to do that whole thing. Uh, so it's like there's little things they've tried to make it relevant, but it still doesn't really work for me. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below on Iron Man 2, the movie itself. And also on this pitch meeting, I think he does a really good job with this pitch meeting. Uh, you know, it's one of the earlier ones, but this one was still really funny. If you are subscribed to this channel, though, I really thank you so much for being subscribed. I'm not sure if we're at a thousand or not yet at the time of this recording. We're about at 975. Um, so we're at a thousand. Yay. Woohoo. If not, uh, then, you know, that's kind of how that goes. But if we're at a thousand, I'll put something in the comments in reference to a gift card giveaway. Um, I'll figure it out while, as I go, but be on the lookout for that. Uh, it'll show up on one of the videos this week if we hit a thousand subscribers this week. So that's a plan. That's a plan. I'm really enjoying what we're doing here. If you're not subscribed to the channel, think about subscribing if you enjoy this content. I have a lot of fun with what I'm doing here and I, I'm really having fun with all the people that are joining in and talking in the comments. We have a really good time down there with this community we're building. So like this video, share it with someone if you think they enjoy the content. And before you go, check out some of the other pitch meeting reactions that we've got. You can also check out the Incredible Hulk versus reaction, which was between Honest Trailer and Pitch Meeting. Honest trailer, I think for me, want it because they, have, they gave me the biggest laugh. I'm not going to give it away, but check that out so you can see what I'm talking about. Other than that, if you've seen all that already, then I will see you as always in the comments.